Bum, bum, bum. I forgot I still got the polarizer on it. We're going fishing today, boys. Welcome back. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode. If you guys are new here, do me a favor. Consider hitting that subscribe button. You won't be pissed. But we're currently walking to a pond and uh, we're gonna be flipping heavy pads. If the flipping doesn't work, then we're gonna go to frogs. But I really wanna cover flipping today because what I'm going to be doing and the cover that I'm going to be fishing it tends to be very intimidating. I was intimidated by it for a while until I figured out exactly how to do it. And there's not a lot of tutorials on how to get this done here on YouTube. So I'm gonna take care of it for you guys today. And uh, it's a great way to potentially catch some big bass. So I got Mike out here today. He's just fishing because he ain't fished for a while. So we'll see. What are you, are you gonna fish a frog or are you gonna I'm flip? With He's gonna start with a frog. So we got top water and we got flipping. We got two presentations coming out here today and they're going to be the only two presentations that are actually gonna work in this pond here today. So we're gonna get over there. We gotta walk for a little bit and then we'll see you guys in a minute. So as you guys can see, this pond is heavily covered in lily pads all along the shorelines. You got a couple breaks in the pads. Uh, but for the most part, it's all weeds and pets. Now for a lot of you, you guys might be used to doing pond fishing where you just throw on a Cinco, you throw on a rubber worm, and you get to work. You catch a lot of fish, you throw spinner baits, it's a lot of fun. But what do you do when you're in this position where you can't get out to the main water? Most of the fish probably aren't out in the main water and you want to get inside these lily pads. So you got two options. You're either gonna punch through these lily pads or you're gonna fish on top of them. So Mike's fishing a frog and you know, that's beneficial, but there's certain times of the day where frog benefits you more than others. In my opinion, top water is the best in the morning or late at night but well, you can still catch fish. What I'm going to be doing is I'm gonna be fishing cover. I'm gonna be punching in and out of these lily pads and I'm gonna get those fish that are just sitting under those pads and uh, you know, they're just hanging out in the shade. They're hanging a little bit tighter to the bottom. I'm gonna show you guys exactly how I'm going to do that today. So uh, we're gonna switch over to the GoPro and I'm gonna learn you here something. Or I could be uh, completely wrong and Mike might just lay him out on the frog. So it is what it is, I, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's flip over to the GoPro. Alrighty, so here we go. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm fishing with and how I like to go about, you know, fishing pads and stuff like this. So right off the bat, you guys are gonna wanna go to the setup that you're going to use. If you have a frog setup, you could probably get away with using the exact same setup. It's very similar. You guys have seen me use this setup in other videos, but this is a heavy action rod. This is a seven foot six. You guys are gonna want a little bit of length, but you're mainly gonna want power. I got a fast gear ratio reel, just like flipping any jig. You wanna be able to pick up that slack and then uh, I'm running 60 pound braid. You wanna be able to get through these lily pads. These lily pads are gonna fight back, man. They are strong and it's really hard to get, you know, your bait in and out of them, let alone a fish. So that's what we're gonna be using as far as the setup goes. And then as far as my terminal goes, we are going to be using a 5 out flipping hook, as you guys can see right here. You can use a worm hook or EWG hook if you want. Works just as fine, but uh, I like using a flipping hook. You got a little more beef on the hook and uh, it's just easier to tank fish through. On top of that, we have a 5 16 ounce bullet weight, and then I have a bobber stopper or a sinker stopper, whatever you want to call it, a peg, about half a foot above the hook. So the reason that I have this set up like this is because I want to be able to get my bait down in there and I want, you know, I want that weight pegged so it kind of falls where I want it to go. And then other than that, I'm using a Guggen Baits Trench Hog. I like to use a bait with a lot of appendages, kind of when you get that flutter, it kind of just falls through there, it gives it a little more movement. That's just what I like. You guys can use something like a Bandito Bug. You can honestly use whatever you want, but uh, I'm choosing the Guggen Baits Trench Hog today. But the reason I have this pegged about six inches above my hook is because I just like to punch things and give that bait a little bit more flutter. I don't want to give it too much travel because a lot of times when I'm using a lighter sinker like this, now I know this isn't really a light sinker, but uh, it's also not super heavy. Sometimes it doesn't fully get through there when it gets all caught up and you have that sinker moving around a lot. So I have it pegged and yeah, that's the setup. I'm gonna throw it down in there. Now you guys got heavier cover, heavier mats, heavier pads, you might wanna move on up, but uh, I found this weight to work out just fine for me, or at least I think it's going to. If not, I'll move up to like a half ounce. But what I'm going to be doing here is I'm gonna be flinging this bait straight up in the air and aiming for these patches of the lily pads, like so. Let it punch right through there. Let it fall down a little bit and then pick my rod tip up and I'm just gonna pop it. See if we 
can't get one. We should be able to get a few. All right, we're gonna go on a little walk here. We gotta, we gotta catch some fish today. I'm going through the jungle right now. All right, we're gonna fly back here to this pipe. It looks a little more shady back here, maybe a little more juicy. I don't know. I'm surprised I didn't get anything over there. Usually when I'm fishing the pads, that side of the pond tends to produce a little more fish, but it's not always how it goes. So we got a lot of open water over here, or what I would consider open water for this pond. So we're just gonna fling up into this big boy and uh, see if we can't get something. There's a fish right there. Got him. Ooh, took long enough. It's not a bad one either. Okay, I'll take it. There we go. Woo, first one, baby. Ooh, I'm there. Ooh, that's a strong one. There you guys go. As soon as you see that line moving, set that hook and you're good to go. All right, maybe we might be onto something here. We might have found where them fish are at. Wow, he just tanked that bait. There's fish. Got him. Feels. Oh yeah. There we go. That's a better fish. Almost two pounds there. And they're gonna be stockpiled, guys. They're gonna be in there. Boom. This bait's gonna be toasty before I know it. There you go. That one's close to two. Probably about a pound and a half. Get bigger, buddy. So I kind of got out of the sun, and uh, there's a actually a lot less open water a lot more cover over here so uh, maybe that just made all the difference to finding the fish but uh i don't know or just because i can fish better because i'm standing up on this pipe i'm not really sure my scenario here but uh my bait is getting toasted from this hook oh i couldn't tell if that was a fish or if i just got deep in there Make sure you guys are constantly readjusting that hook because if you don't get that hook hidden, if you don't get that bait positioned right, you will be in danger. You will be in danger. We're gonna come down here and these spots that look the scariest, you know, the most heavily weeded could be some of the best potential spots. They will be frustrating, but if you can plop them in there right, let them fall down in there, it can be very rewarding. You know where I always get fish? Can I just take one cast of your frog just out of curiosity? Here, yeah, hold this. how nice this rod is. So, this corner back here, when you guys are fishing shallow water with lily pads, if you can find like a solid foot of water, those fish, heads up, I'm gonna cast over my head, are gonna hang out behind you. Wow, this reel is super nice. Cast right off that shoreline, pop that frog in that shallow water, make sure you pause it for a minute, run it through those pads when you get into the open parts of the water, pause it. Wow, I really like this reel. <laughs> this whole setup's very nice. I remember feeling this great. The juice window has opened. Oh, well, the flipping method worked for Mike. <laughs> nice, buddy. Yeah, it's not a bad one. Backlash. You backlash it? I so. <laughs> that was funny. I mean, hey, it works. There you go. There you go. As in, you want to keep it or you want to switch back? That's your call. If you want to rock that for a little bit, go for it. I don't, but I will if you want to fish that. Nah, for the sake of the video, sorry, buddy. I'm gonna switch back. You got. All right, we're gonna get back over here where it's a little more shallow. See what I can pick out of this. Oh, not a tree. Well, there goes that. <laughs> a five eye flipping hook into a, a falling down tree ain't gonna fight better. Ain't gonna come out, unfortunately. Let me see that bag on your back. Alrighty guys, well we left our knife on the other side of the lake, so here we go. Caveman fishing 101. Find a buddy in a sharp rock. Because when you're when you're rolling with 60 pound braid, it's not exactly the easiest thing to cut. Oh my god. Mike, you picked a bad rock. Here, flip it over. Wait, you think that sounds better? Yeah. It broke the rock. <laughs> There Boom. She, goes. she done it. We're gonna keep she, this rock. she done did it. Put her in your pocket. 
receiving that rock for good times. All right, the back to where we were. I hope I don't get any ticks walking through this long grass. I've been getting all kinds of deer ticks all over me recently. Running around in the backyard, this high grass is not the most friendly feller, let me tell you. All right, back to the juice spot where I was catching all of them earlier. See if we can't get some fish to uh, get a little frisky over here, huh? What do you guys think? Look at this, guys. As I was talking about getting ticks on me, what is that? A friggin' tick crawling around in my leg here. No, 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 no. Sorry, buddy. Not today. Hopefully there's no more. Man, I swear, sometimes I just shouldn't say things because then it ends up happening. <laughs> No more deer ticks and how you guys know if I know they're deer ticks because deer ticks are brown And it's almost deer season, so I'll be doing some deer hunting But go bother the deer don't get in my leg hair man. I gotta like I gotta like I gotta quarantine my legs over here. Don't walk around in tall grass with shorts. It's... You guys gotta be kidding me are they in my shoes that's another tick Ay ay ay. I swear. That's two ticks. I can feel them crawling in my leg here. Where are you coming from? I've almost gotten more ticks in this video than I have fish. Isn't that exciting? There he is. Got him. Oh, come on, get out of there. Oh, you sucker. He took me down and I didn't get him good enough. Man, oh man, I don't know. I might have stung him too hard. I don't know if I'll get that fish back. Alrighty guys, so we're about to wrap up the day. I didn't have too much time to come out here and film. We ended up catching a total of four fish, I think. I caught, or yeah, you caught one on the frog. He caught one on my flipping thing, and then I caught two, and then I actually lost one. Sometimes fishing's just not that great. The bass fishing's been really weird in Ohio lately. I don't know what it is, but I just haven't been able to stick a lot of bass. We really haven't had the weather to do it as much as I'd like to, but uh, you know, it is what it is. We still caught fish, so I consider it a good day. I'm gonna go over this rig with you guys so you can see it up close and personal in case you're curious exactly how this looks when it's put together. Um, what I have on my rod is a little bit different than what I started with, but I'll go into that. So uh, I'm gonna have Mike film this a little bit easier if he doesn't mind, and uh, I'm gonna just, boop, we're gonna crash down. So what I was using today was a little flipping setup like this, guys. Now this is, pretty different compared to what I started with. What I started with was a 5 16th ounce sinker or bullet weight with a 5 aught flipping hook. Now after I broke this off on a tree, I ended up just setting it up with an EWG because I only got one flipping hook left and I got to restock them and I didn't want to use it. So I resorted to going to this. Now the rigs are pretty much the same thing. I like to use a flipping hook a little bit better if you guys can see between the two. A uh, 5 aught flipping hook is significantly beefier, I don't know, can you see that well in there, yeah. than a uh, 5 aught EWG hook. If you guys don't know what EWG is, EWG stands for Extra Wide Gap Hook, so there you go, or people will call this a worm hook. But uh, this is the ideal thing you want to go with. Anyways, what you're going to do is you're going to essentially Texas rig it, as you guys can see here below. You put it through the top of the bait, you twist that hook around, and you simply hide that hook in the bait followed by your bullet weight. This, I ended up moving up to a half ounce bullet weight and uh, I found the half ounce punched a little bit better than the 5 16th, but I caught fish with the 5 16th ounce. I don't know if it was just timing or what. And then what I do is about, I don't know, probably about eight to 10 inches above that, I have that bobber stopper or that peg right there. This peg, you guys can slide all the way down and you can straight peg stuff if you wanna get into heavy cover and get that straight punched through and work it off the bottom. But for a pond like this and when I'm fishing lily pads, I like to slide it up a little bit so you can kind of punch through and let that bait flutter down a little bit. And then when I pop it up, it still kind of has a flutter, but still doesn't get above those lily pads to the point where this bait's coming back up and hooking onto stuff. This is not the easiest way to fish. It definitely takes some learning and uh, you know, I'm not honestly the best at it, but sometimes you have ponds around you that are completely covered like this. You can't get out there. You can't fish the Cinco like you're used to doing. So uh, dabbling into something like this, you know, gets kind of fun. And it's not the hardest thing ever if you know what to do. Mike's never fished one before and we switched rods for a second and he caught a fish. So it's about putting in the right place and you gotta put the time in. At the end of the day, it's a lot more patience to do it this way and you're gonna get hung up a lot more. You're gonna get snagged a lot more. 
but uh, a lot of times you can find big fish in heavy cover like this and uh, today it didn't pay off but I can assure you one of these days when you're doing this it will so uh, there you guys go there's a simple flipping setup there for you get out there have some fun punch heavy weed mats punch the lily pads get it done I gotta go take care of some other things. Me and Mike are actually gonna be heading out to Michigan this weekend to fish a muskie tournament on Lake St. Clair with a bunch of other YouTubers. So you guys gotta stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get to see all the cover on that. It's gonna be crazy. We, we could catch some of the biggest fish of our life. Right, Mike, huh? Should be crazy. So thank you guys so much. Hey, if you're new here, do me a favor. Smash the subscribe button. Go over to Instagram, shoot me a follow. And uh, drop a like on this video if you liked it. Other than that, if you got any questions, leave a comment down below and uh, you know the deal. We will catch you in the next one.